Have you ever wondered about the fact why there was an outrage about a small child who was washed up ashore when at the same time at a different part of the ocean, a boat with a whole group of refugees, including families, sunk? Or maybe you've thought about why people only seem to care about individual war stories rather than stories that are about a big number of people. Are people really that hypocritical? Or are they just unable to care? Well, in this video, I'm going to explain to you what's really going on. Before you can understand what's really going on, you need to know a few basic mechanisms that play a big role in this caring game. I'm going to address them shortly and talk about them more later on in this video. So the first one is imagery. Imagery is your ability to visualize yourself in someone else's situation. So you can call it empathizing. The second one is attention. Attention, you all know what attention means. It's like how interested you are in the topic that you're reading in or that you're hearing about or that you're watching on TV. The more interested you are, the more emotional, the more caring you will be. These parts, these, these two parts, actually form some sort of equation, as I like to call it. And what they form is imagery plus attention induce feelings. And feelings will help you to decide whether you should care about someone or not. And if you care about someone, you will most likely help that person. So now that we know how people start to care about something or someone, let's talk a little bit more about the different parts of the equation. The first one is imagery. Imagery is built on affect. So what is affect? Affect is the psychological term that's used to describe how people interpret meaning. So for example, let's say you're listening to classical music with a friend of yours. Your friend is feeling very relaxed because of the classical music. But you, you don't like it. You're getting annoyed. The affect of your friend is feeling very relaxed but you, you're annoyed and you get a bit upset and that's your affect. It's basically how it makes you feel, how something makes you feel. And affect happens very automatic and sometimes without conscious intent. So now is the question, what is the right amount of affect that you need to provoke helping behavior? And that's the tricky part of the equation. On the other hand, the simpler part of the equation is attention. Research shows that attention magnifies emotional experiences. And as we all know, attention is very easy to create. You can create a commercial, you can create a benefit concert to go to and to raise awareness. So in sum, attention is very easy to generate, but it's the affect that really holds the attention and the awareness of the person that you want to persuade. So now that we understand the different mechanisms that play a role in the caring game, we can now take a look at how we value lives. There are different models that tell us how we should value a life. The first model that I'm going to discuss is the linear model. The linear model tells us that we value every life. So every person's life, we value that equally. Let me show you what I mean. So right now I'm going to draw a sketch a graph to show you exactly what I mean. So the x-axis will represent the amount of people. And the y-axis will represent the value of every life. The value of every person's life will increase proportionately with the amount of people. So it would look like this. And that's why it's called the linear model of evaluation of people's lives. So is this linear model really an accurate description of how we value lives? Well, to be honest, it shows us how we want to be, but not who we are. Because if we would value every life as equal as the other, we would care a lot more about what happens in other countries and in other states and whatever. So we need a better model to show us how we evaluate lives. And that model is going to be the psychophysical model. So research shows us that we actually value lives in a totally different way. A way that you probably don't even expect of yourself. So let me draw a graph of the psychophysical model to show you exactly what I mean. 
The x-axis will represent the amount of people and the y-axis will represent the value of a person's life. The steepness of the line will represent the value of a person's life individually. So now I'm going to draw the line. So as you can see, the value for one person's life is actually quite big. But for the second person, it already starts to decline. The first part is bigger than the second part. So from the second person, the value continues to decline until the value of a person's life becomes negligible to you. So what does this mean? It means that we are unable to value a person's life equally to more than one person. So now that we know how much we actually value a person's life, let's find out how much we actually care about a person's life. So you've probably heard on the news stories about where a large number of people are getting killed daily by wars, diseases and suicide attacks. The natural reaction would be something like, man, it's a horrible situation to be in and it's just horrible that things like that happen in our world. But unfortunately, it stops there. And you've asked yourself probably like, is this a normal reaction to have? We just care not too much? Well, an experiment researched this topic. So the experiment consists of three groups. In one group they would ask how much money you would donate to a boy who lived in poverty. In the second group they would ask the participants the same questions, but now to another boy. And in the third group they would ask how much money they would donate to both children in need. So as you might assume, the more people that are in need of help, the more people will be inclined to give them that help. But the opposite was true. The results of the research showed that there was more money donated to the people individually than when they were together. People also cared more about these children individually than when they were together. So what does this mean? It means that our capacity to feel is limited. The value, how much we care about the person, the value of that is very high for that person. But after the second person, it already starts to decline and it collapses totally at the big number of people. This effect is also known as psychic numbing. So let me illustrate with a graph what I mean. So the x-axis will represent again the amount of people and the y-axis will represent again the value of a person's life. So as you can see, how much you care for one person is actually quite big, but it already starts to decline at the second person and it collapses totally at the large number of people. So the more people there are, the less you actually care. So to sum it all up, we're unable to care equally for more than one person and we're unable to value less equally for more than one person. So to answer the question I asked at the beginning of the video, we're just unable to care as deeply for a group than that we can for an individual. It's just the way that we are, we're programmed this way. This might seem a little bit pessimistic and a little bit negative, but it actually isn't. Because this should make you realize that, that the one thing you need is just one person. You don't need a large number of people. You just need one person to make a difference.